Hi everybody, this is a follow-up to the five videos I made for Maiden Corby and Wellingborough about how to create a piece of creative writing at home. Um, as you may have guessed from the change in background and attire, this is going to be a slightly different video in which I'm just going to um, suggest some different ways you can switch up that process to create a slightly different piece of work. If you haven't checked out the original five videos yet, I really recommend you do that first as this is going to be changes made to the process that I went through in those five videos. However, if you've already been through those five videos and created your piece of work and now you're looking for a way to kind of mix that up, then I'm just going to give you a quick couple of ideas or tools for you to add to that process and help you keep creating if that's really what you want to do. So the first alternative idea I have for you, obviously the process that we followed um, very much fits around the idea of producing your own text uh, or finding a piece of text kind of in a um, in whatever you had to hand. Now obviously those two methods can be adjusted in themselves, you can try writing from a different prompt or you can just simply find a different text of source and that's more what I'm going to look at today but all of these kind of methodologies can be mixed and match uh, and I'll clarify a few of what I mean by that um, as we go. So first up I, had, I took a Robert Frost uh, poem here. So actually this is already a creative piece that has very considered language and considered imagery and an intention. There is an artist behind it already with an intention trying to give the piece of writing a voice. Um, and so what I did to this, sorry Robert Frost if you're watching, is I took the poem and I put it in a word jumbler online. Uh, just a random little system where I could paste the text in and it would get all jumbled up and then give it back to me. And there I already had a nice block of text of mixed up words and after that I just followed through the same process where I um, stripped it right down to the words that I wanted, I found what I wanted to say with the piece and then I kind of shaped it to fit into that. Again if you haven't seen the five previous videos go back and watch those and I go into a lot more detail about how that works. Something you can do is take a existing piece of art that you really love or admire or just that simply interests you or you think has interesting language and completely mess it up, completely rearrange it and turn it into put your imprint onto it to create something entirely new. So next I really wanted to mix up what the source was um, and so actually I went for Act 2, Scene 3 of Measure for Measure by William Shakespeare. So many different things going on to achieve a totally different piece of creative writing, a piece of creative writing that's intended for performance. And I was really fascinated to know what would happen if we put that through the process. And so that's exactly what I did. I don't think it shares too many elements of the original scene. It definitely has a heightened nature to it, as does the script, because that's just the language used. It was hard to get away from that. But I didn't really want to. I kind of just wanted to find my own uh, language within the words that Shakespeare had used in those scenes. Shakespeare's language comes through with such a rhythm and a pace, such an intention, so I purposefully went against that and broke it all up to give it a much more considered and slow paced kind of reading. So yeah, again, take something from a place that you wouldn't necessarily expect, takes a conversational element, take text out of uh, its intended atmosphere or um, environment, take it and run it through that process. And then lastly, and this is more of a task based thing, um, but something that could be very fun if you could find someone willing to do it with you, try recording yourself having a conversation and then transcribe that conversation down. Admittedly, I cheated. I used a uh, conversational transcript that I found online just for the purposes of this. And a double kind of change that I made to this methodology is rather than produce a found poem more in the way that we'd looked at before, I created this monologue, essentially. I would probably suggest, um, if you want to take, if you f end up doing this and you want to take it further, is that you take that final monologue and then you rewrite it to kind of allow yourself all the editing and the ability to add any words that you want to find a connection and a stream of consciousness a bit more clearly throughout. 
and I found it quite a challenge personally, but I actually, I was quite intrigued by what came out in the end. And like I said, maybe if I took that final step of kind of using this monologue as my blueprint and then wrote something brand new based on that or just kind of adding words and taking them away, trying to give it a very much clearer focus, uh, it could be a really useful and interesting way to create a, a piece of performance text rather than a piece of poetry. And so there you go. There are a few other ways that you can create your very own piece of creative writing at home. Um, again, like I said earlier, just kind of mix and match them. Uh, whatever rules that we've talk spoken about, you can uh, swap one in, swap one out. And it doesn't have to be something that I've said either. If you have a unique idea about how to switch that process up, uh, just apply it, you know, change one of those five steps and you're going to get a different result every time. There's so much work that you can be creating if you want to be. I just wanted to give you a few more tools to help you do that. Thank you. And uh, as I said in the last video of the five steps, please, please, please do share any work that you create. I would really love to see it. I'd be really excited to see what you guys are coming up with.